Now, uh, now what is Z matrix? So, Z matrix, as I said, it basically um, uh, writes the internal coordinates of a molecule uh, in a, a more tractable form. So, let us say I am taking the example of, uh, of ethane. So, ethane I have carbon, I have another carbon and I have CH3 here and and the C S three here. I'll just name them as one atom two atom three atom four five six seven and eight. So to write the Z matrix first I write my number 1 atom is carbon here, number 1 is carbon, number 2 is also a carbon. So, now number 2 atom is connected to number 1 atom. So, 2 is connected to number 1 atom by a bond distance of 1.54 angstrom. This is an angstrom. Now, what is my atom 3? My atom 3 is hydrogen and that is connected to 1 by a bond distance of 1.0 angstrom. 3 is also making uh, an angle with 3, 1, 2. So, I write here 3, 1, 2 and the angle is 109.5. Number 4 atom is a hydrogen which is bonded to 2 by a distance of 1 and it makes an angle of 4, 2, 1 again. So, I add angle 4 to 1 with the same angle of 109.5. Now, your 4 also makes a dihedral. Uh, so, my dihedral is 4, 2, 1, 3. So, I can write 4, 2, 1, 3. So, that is a dihedral and that dihedral value is 180. Yeah, because this is a staggered conformation of ethane. So, here you can see that 4, 2, 1, 3. Uh, which is 4, 2, 1, 3 forms a dihedral of 180 degree. Similarly, 5 is also hydrogen connected to 1 by 1 1.0. It uh, makes an angle of 5, 1, 2 of angle value 109.5. It forms a dihedral with 5, 1, 2, 4. 5, 1, 2, 4 and that angle is 60 degree. 6 uh, forms, uh, where is my 6? My 6 is here. So, it uh, is also hydrogen atom, forms a bond with 2, a bond distance 1, um, 6 forms an angle with 6 to 1, 6 to 1, angle is again 109.5 degree and 6 forms a dihedral with 6, 2, 1, 5. 6, 2, 1, 5 forms a dihedral of minus 60. Let me just erase that minus 60. Number 7 is hydrogen uh, forming uh, with 1, forming a bond with 1 and that value is 1.0 and the angle it makes with 7, 7, 1, 2, again 109.5. So, now uh, atom number 6 uh, is also a hydrogen which forms uh, a bond with 2 of 1.0, uh, 6 forms the angle of 
0.621 with a value of 109.5 and then it also forms a dihedral of 6215 yes and that uh, dihedral angle is minus 60. Atom number 7 which is a hydrogen forms a um, uh, forms a bond with uh, 1 of value 1.0 uh, 712 forms an uh, angle of 109.5 and 7124 or 7126. 7126. We are trying to cover all possible um, dihedral angles and that is 180. So that the, uh, the, uh, the full structure of the molecule is defined. Number 8 is a hydrogen connected to 2 by a bond distance of 1.0. 8 to 1 is the angle of 109.5 and with a 8 uh, to um, what is my 8? 8 to 1 7 is my dihedral of 1 uh, of 60 degree. Okay, so this is the Z matrix of ethane. <coughs> so, if I have Z matrix, then I can uh, easily get the bond angle and the dihedral values quickly instead of looking at the XYZ coordinates of each atom and uh, calculate bond angle uh, and dihedral to make my calculations uh, faster. Uh, okay, so so far what we have seen is that we can have our initial coordinates from protein data bank, or we can, if there is no structure available, um, we can generate. Uh, a crude structure from homology modeling uh, if you are interested for a biomolecule um, or you can make a simple model by by, by drawing by chem draw for example uh, if your molecule is small um, uh, and then um, you choose the right force field parameters so choosing the right force field parameters is important uh, because the library uh, some scientists are uh, interested in uh, water soluble proteins. So, their force field parameters would be different than um, a set of parameters which are uh, which are made with the aim of covering the membrane proteins for example. Since membrane proteins are uh, less water soluble versus the other set of proteins which are cytosolic proteins. So, the parameters developed in this window versus that window will differ. So, if you choose a force field parameters which were made um, uh, which are made for membrane proteins and now you are picking up those parameter for files for a cytosolic protein and run your simulation you your results will not be very good. So, that is another conceptual understanding you should have when you want to generate the different microstates of your uh, system of interest. Um, so, you um, so you chosen uh, you got the initial coordinates you chosen the right force parameters and then you now know the um, different um, um, tricks of uh, the MD simulations the technique by which you will uh, generate different microstates um, and by those tricks you made your simulation uh, much more practical in a sense that you are uh, you, you given your protein uh, or your uh, uh, liquid uh, bulk like behavior um, so that there is no surface effect. Um, so, surface effect you demote by periodic boundary condition, then you apply the minimum image convention to cut down the number of original interactions to the same half of n into n minus 1. And then you used another trick called uh, cutoff by which you further cut down the number of interactions to make your calculations faster. Um, so, you are ready to go uh, to generate the new uh, conformations or the new microstates. And so, how do we do that? 
So now we'll talk about how we propagate our system. How do you generate new microstate starting from a given microstate? So my given microstate is basically the initial uh, coordinates, which, uh, which basically put up together, which will give you an initial structure.